The next Winter Olympic Games are right around the corner, happening in February 2010 in Vancouver, Canada. So why are we in Chicago? Because athletes from all over the country who are hoping for a spot in the US Olympic team have come here to talk to the media about their chances of gold. Let's go meet some of the world's greatest sporting stars. I've read that it takes about eight to ten years to actually develop the skills to become a world-class loser. What skills are those? Um, well, uh, the skills, first of all, you need a very fast start. So there's a lot of technique involved in that start, a lot of strength, a lot of explosive power. Um, another great skill is being able to navigate down the course properly. So steering in the right points, doing everything it takes to make it down safely. Um, and then uh, another final component is having really good position on the sled, which sounds simple, but at 90 miles an hour, sometimes it gets a little tricky. You're from Miami. You've got a Cuban-American background. Where does the winter come into this? It doesn't, really. Um, I grew up actually on roller skates. My parents got me involved in private lessons and eventually came competitions. And through roller skating, I met, uh, at the time, my, a boyfriend of mine. He convinced me to try the ice. But speed skating, to me, is so pure because at least the, the the long track speed skating that I do because it's a time trial sport and so you're not really competing against another person, you're competing against the clock and so on that day the fastest person does win. Having that perspective of seeing your life through a documentary filmmaker's eyes, that's sort of what got you into skiing, isn't it? I was in Park City, Utah for the Sundance Festival. I'm looking up at these mountains thinking, yeah, I know, I know about that disabled skiing thing, I want to try that. So I called the mountain and arranged a ski lesson. This, you know, former Swiss ski racer was now, you know, coaching in the U.S. I very distinctly remember us riding the, one of the first rides on the chairlift and him saying to me, I hope you're not here for a disabled ski lesson because there, there's no such thing as disabled skiing. In skiing, whether you're on one leg or three legs or backwards or blind or in a mono ski, which is how I do it, the same biomechanics and physics apply. How is the role of the driver different to everybody else's role? Um, well, as a four-man team, we all push the sled at the beginning of, the, of the, the run, and then as everybody gets in the sled, I kind of take over and guide the sled down um, through the track and try to minimize our losing speed and, and try to have the fastest time and the fastest lines down the track. Driver implies that you have maybe a steering wheel in there, dashboard, maybe a cup yeah. holder. Um, unfortunately, it's not quite the, the luxury of like a nice uh, Cadillac or something, but uh, um, there's no steering wheel. There's actually um, a steering mechanism that's connected to the axle and basically there's two ropes that connect to the steering mechanism. You pull on the left rope and it goes left, you pull on the right rope it goes right. Mirai, you're only 16 years old. You've been competing at a high level for since you were really young. What's your daily routine? I wake up at 7, walk the dog and get ready for skating and go skating at 9 and then go to a different rink at 11 and then after about 3 o'clock I go home and start schoolwork and then the whole cycle starts again. It's a pretty packed schedule. Do you ever wake up in the morning and think, I'm sick of this, I don't want to go to the rink today? Uh, every day. <laughs> Sometimes you just want to stay in bed and just lay there, but I never get the chance to. But I guess I could say I'm really hard on myself and um, I think it's because I'm hard on myself that I always strive to get better. How does skeleton compare to luge? Because they look quite similar, but is the approach different? Uh, they're feet first, we're head first. We sprint, they paddle. <laughs> I mean, it's the same thing, it's just uh, they have a little bit more control. You competed in the 2006 Olympics. What was your experience like? Horrible. <laughs> um, getting there was sucked. I mean, it was just such a stressful season, but I mean, once I actually got to walk into opening ceremonies, the world changed. It was no longer about me. I really felt humbled and I was just a small part of something so much bigger than myself and it's something I'll never forget. You had a pretty bad experience with a bobsled back in, in 2005. Mm -hmm. What happened? So um, it was at our Olympic trials for 2006 for the Games. A couple girls went down, I went down, and we're waiting at the bottom of the track up in Calgary, Canada. We heard a loud noise and we're like, that, you know, that doesn't sound like a skeleton sled, it just sounds too big and too loud. And also we turned and we looked and, and over our shoulder we could see a four-man bobsled. They came flying out of the end of the track and, and hit us. And so. After tons of rehab, um, six weeks later, I was back in Europe competing. With, you know, and my leg was still broken. 
Now you're known for a signature move, it's called the Hurricane. Describe the Hurricane. The Hurricane is three flips and five twists. We go about 55 feet up into the air, it takes 3.2 seconds to perform the Hurricane. What is the degree of difficulty of that move? It's one of the highest degree of difficulties in our sport that people compete with. Do you ever wake up with your alarm at 5.45 and think, man, I just don't want to go to the ring today. <laughs> Absolutely. Sometimes, you know, that does happen on occasion. It's hard to get up that early every morning. Um, it used to be earlier. It was difficult to stay motivated every day, but I have a wonderful support system for my parents and my coaches and my choreographers and my mentor, Dorothy Hamill. So, you know, they all, they all keep me motivated. <laughs> How does it actually work? Like, do you, you obviously don't do them at the same time, you know, like skiing through <laughs> shooting at the same time. What's the division there? It's close. Um, we ski around a, a race course and then we come into a shooting range and we stop and we shoot and then we go back out on the ski course. And we do that multiple times during a race. What made you want to get into biathlon rather than just cross country skiing? Biathlon adds an unexpected element um, because uh, the shooting is so unpredictable. Any day, anybody can have a great race or anybody can have a bad race, and so you never know who's going to win. Check out rocketboom.com for the full interviews with each person. Be sure to remember those athletes' names because you're going to see a lot of them come up again in Vancouver. I'm Ella Morton, and you've been watching Rocket Boom. <laughs>